Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's a rainy weekend here in Kentucky. We had a few days of nice weather, and uh, it's kind of dreary and, and getting a bit cooler today, but uh, I guess it'd be a perfect day to show some comic books. What do you say? Uh, I want to show, a, I got a pretty good stack of stuff uh, accumulated here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, just a little bit of everything. Got some uh, Harvey comics, got some Charlton, got some DC, got some Marvel. Uh, and I got a cool uh, Planet Apes collectible I'm going to save to last. Uh, anyway, it's just uh, some stuff I wanted to fill in some runs with, I guess. And uh, some stuff I didn't have. And, uh, you know, as far as the Harvey stuff, I just kind of felt like reading some uh, reading some cool kid comics, you know. <laughs> uh, so I'll just start. Okay, first one we have here is uh, Spooky, number 128. Uh, spooky and Hot Stuff are always my favorite uh, Harvey characters. And uh, Stumbo. <laughs> you guys remember that character? Stumbo Tiny Town. Uh, these were, uh, I just saw these and I was like, you know, I haven't read any Harvey in a while. And this is one of those cool uh, square bound giants. I think these probably came out about the same time as the DC and Marvel were doing their giants. It's a nice uh, square bound book. But uh, lots of fun. Spooky and his uh, Goyle Poyle and, you know, Casper and Wendy the Witch. You know, just some good, uh, just fun entertainment. And we got another giant, Spooky 132. This is, uh, it's in the square bound. It's one of, I don't know what you call it, saddle stitched or whatever. Uh, with some more fun stuff. There we go, Hot Stuff the Little Devil, number 106. I have actually, uh, you know, I can't remember, but I've actually got either the first issue of Hot Stuff or the first issue of Spooky. I'll have to uh, look through my books. Uh, it might be on the shelf here, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, a lot of cool stuff in here. Got uh, Hot Stuff and Stumbo, and O'Floodle, uh, Princess Charma, Grandpa Blaze. <laughs> Just some fun stuff. And this is a square bound, Hot Stuff 107. I don't know, I just have a, a big uh, big affection for these uh, square bound books. A lot of good reading. I love the format. Okay, let's get into some Charlton stuff. Uh, these are actually ones uh, where I'm trying to complete some runs. It might take me a while because a lot of times Charlton books are hard to find. Uh, first one we have here is Ghost Manor number three. Yeah, I think that art is by an artist uh, named, uh, it's either Rock or Rocky Mastroserio. He did a lot of art for Charlton. And here we have Ghost Manor number four. Got some Sino Kim art on the front. I really love that logo. And we have Haunted, or as it was uh, known later, Baron Werewolf's Haunted Library. It's number 28. It's a Mike Zek cover. Yeah, I really love this cover. Ghostly Haunts, number 28. Uh, Joe Staten. Anybody that's a Joe Staten fan, you need to go back and uh, check out some of the horror stuff he did. Really good. More Baron Willow's Haunted Library, number 24, with a uh, painted Tom Sutton cover. And you can't have Charlton Horror without having Steve Ditko, right? Ghostly Haunts, number 34. Another nice cover. And more Steve Ditko, Beyond the Grave, number 6. Because this title didn't last too long. I think at one time, uh, Charlton probably had just as many or more uh, horror titles on the stands as DC and Marvel. 
And speaking of DC, uh, these next two were kind of uh, inspired by my good friend Eric K. I think he had this first one. I didn't even know there, there were Sergeant Rock annuals, and I should have known, but I didn't. And uh, he showed me that he had just uh, recently got one of these, so I said, well, I've got to have that one just for the cover. Uh, so it was Sergeant Rock annual number two. Some Joe Kubert greatness there. You cannot have enough Joe Kubert. And here's uh, Sergeant Rock annual number four from 1984. Doesn't get any better than that. And this is an upgrade because uh, the only copy I had was my childhood copy, and it's uh, it's pretty beat to death. And I always loved this book. Probably why it's wore out, or <laughs> the original copy's worn out. Uh, Super DC Giant number 27. This was actually the last uh, issue in that series. Got a lot of great old sci-fi reprints from uh, Strange Adventures and Mystery in Space. Just some really cool stuff. And we have Zatanna Special Number One, uh, just because I like the character and I love Gray Morrow's art. This is one that doesn't pop up too often. And we have uh, World's Finest Number Two Twenty. This is the only uh, twenty center that I needed for my World's Finest run. Some classic uh, Superman, Batman in the Bronze Age. This is a really good story. And you got a Metamorpho backup feature. I think it's a, uh, yeah, it's a Nick Carty cover. And this is an one that I needed for, a, I guess what you call my Bronze Age run of the World's Finest. This is uh, number 236. I think that's probably an Ernie Chan cover. I guess starring the Atom. These next four, uh, speaking of my friend Eric K, uh, we call this uh, multiple copy sickness. And uh, these were cheap and they were in really high grade. And I was like, why not? So even though I've got a few copies of each of these, now yeah, I've got some more. Here's one I always loved. Cobra number one. Got a great Ernie Chan cover. It's, this one's kind of hard to find in higher grade just because of the black background. But uh, Jack Kirby on the art. It's a good series. And first issue special number 12. Blue Skin Alien Starman. There's several different versions of Starman out there, but I always love this story. He popped up later on in the uh, 90s Starman series, and it was pretty good. Uh, got a great Joe Kubert cover, and got uh, Mike Vosberg on the art on the inside, and I really liked uh, Mike Vosberg's art. Another one of my favorites, uh, first issue special number nine. Great Joe Kubert cover and got Walt Simonson on the art. I'm uh, I'm kind of thinking this was probably going to be like a what I call a sleeper book because uh, now that we know uh, Doctor Fate is going to be in the Black Adam movie, this is probably going to get a little traction. I'm not sure, but you know, I got it for like two fifty, so I was happy to have another Kubert cover in the collection. And last but not least, and some of you probably know what's coming here. <laughs> we have Commandy number 18. I don't know how many copies of this is now, but it's several. And this is probably, I'd say this is probably just about the best copy grade-wise that I've got. It's really, really sharp. And I got it for cheap, so uh, really happy to have another copy of this. Okay, on to a few Marvel books. Uh, close to uh, completing my Invaders run now. So here we have uh, Invaders number 40. 
think that's a Dave Cockrum cover, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Dave Cockrum and Joe Sinnott. Invaders 41. Uh, this is the last issue. Really nice cover, and I didn't know what I was looking at it, but this is actually a square bound book. So another reason to have it, other than it's just a great series and a great cover. So that's the last issue of The Invaders. And here's issue 21. I'm thinking this is uh, Gil Kane. Another great cover. And number 38. So this just leaves me one issue shy of having uh, my invaders uncompleted. And last but not least, to close this one out, under the comic section anyway, uh, these are a couple of a couple of giants. I've got another one coming in. Uh, but this is a, a issue of Action Comics I always wanted. It's 80 page giant. It's number 334. I think it's... Uh, G20 as far as the numbering goes on the uh, Giant series. Some of my buddy Rod's beloved uh, Go Go Checks covers. Got a lot of great reprints in here. Legion of Superheroes, Superman and Supergirl. Uh, lots of entertainment in these big thick beauties. Okay, in the last comic, uh, I think this leaves me 9 or 10. Probably 10 short of uh, completing my Justice League run. It's Justice League 41, first appearance of the key. So, really happy to have this one in the collection. I think probably 9 out of the, or probably 8 out of the 10 I need for the Justice League is in the first 10, so it might be a while before I get all those. But that's okay. Uh, last thing I want to show you, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm a, kind of a Planet of the Apes fan. And uh, a couple of years ago, our local convention, uh, one of my, I guess, goals as far as the Planet of the Apes was to like get a picture or an autograph uh, of like one of the last, you know, surviving members of the original movies. And there's not many left. And uh, Linda Harrison, who played Nova was going to be there a couple of years ago, so I was all excited, you know, hey, get to meet somebody from Planet of the Apes and get an autograph and a picture maybe, and uh, she canceled out. So uh, I found a uh, website online at uh, Delta Memorabilia. I got a nice little photo autographed by Miss Harrison. Uh, it's her and Charlton Heston in the original movie. You can see her signature there and uh, put Nova underneath it. So a nice little uh, piece of memorabilia for my Planet of the Apes shelf. And here we have the uh, Certificate of Authenticity. So I know it's authentic. So uh, really happy to have that. And that goes back up on my ape shelf until I can find a frame. Uh, well, guys, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I might throw another video up this weekend. And uh, this coming week, I've got some more stuff coming in. So hope everybody's having a great weekend, and uh, I will see you soon. Onward and upward.